Okay, we've got two more kinds of syllogisms we're going to look at, disjunctive and hypothetical. Let's start with disjunctive because these guys, uh, they play by their own rules. The good news is about the disjunctive syllogism is that it has only one rule. It's simple and it's easy to remember. So remember, a disjunctive syllogism is a syllogism with a disjunctive proposition in the premise. What that means is it's an either or kind of premise. And there's one rule, one rule that governs disjunctive syllogisms. Let me read it to you. A disjunctive syllogism must, it absolutely must contain in the premises a denial of one alternative while the conclusion affirms the other. So if you say either A or B, your second premise must, it must, it must be a denial of one in order to conclude the affirmative of the other. That's the only way a disjunctive syllogism works. For example, either A or B, not B, therefore A. Uh, if it doesn't look that way, it's invalid. It's a formal fallacy, okay? So disjunctive syllogisms, uh, we're gonna look at them because there's some tricky ones. I'm gonna give you a tricky one when we come back to class, um, but that, that just always apply that rule. And if you don't apply that rule, you can be fooled by the terms, but if you apply that rule, denial in one of the premises, affirmative of the other in the conclusion. You're going to always be, be able to tell whether it is uh, valid or invalid. Okay, the one rule. Okay, if disjunctive syllogisms are simple, hypothetical syllogisms are confusing and complicated. Let's remember what they are. Hypothetical syllogisms are syllogisms that have either one or two hypothetical or conditional premises. Okay, we're going to talk about pure hypothetical syllogisms, which have two hypothetical uh, or conditional premises like this. If you water the lawn, then it will grow. If the lawn grows, then you will have to mow it. You can therefore conclude that if you water the lawn, you will then have to mow it. That is what we call a pure hypothetical uh, syllogism. So how do we determine the validity. Well, like disjunctive syllogisms, it's it's simple. There's only one rule, but it's a little confusing, right? So I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to explain what it means. The first premise, and you should test yourself so you can figure this out right now, see if you recognize all of these terms. The first premise and the conclusion have the same antecedent. The second premise and the conclusion have the same consequent. And the consequent of the first premise is the same as the antecedent, of the second premise. You got that? Let me show you a chart uh, that will make it a little bit easier to understand, all right? And, and we may need to review these terms, antecedent, consequent. Okay, so the antecedent comes first, consequent comes second. So uh, if X, antecedent, then Y is the consequent. If Y, antecedent, then Z, consequent. Therefore, in my conclusion, if X, antecedent, then Z, consequent. And you want them to match the way that they match here. They have to match this way. The antecedent, you see it there in the, in the first premise. So the antecedent of the first premise has to be the antecedent of the conclusion. If it's not, throw it out. It's invalid. Uh, if it passes that test, then check. Is the consequent of the first premise the antecedent of the second premise? If, that's, if it's not, throw it out. If it is, we can move on to the third and final test, which is if the consequent of the second premise is the consequent of the conclusion, and it must be. So you gotta have the same consequent in your second premise as you have in your conclusion. Okay, so let's go back and look at that uh, one rule, which I think maybe is better understood as three rules, uh, and see if we understand it now. Okay, so it has to have these conditions in order for uh, a pure hypothetical syllogism to be valid. The first premise and the conclusion have the same antecedent. The second premise and the conclusion have the same consequent, and the consequent of the first premise is the same as the antecedent of the second premise. All right, so one big rule, maybe better understood as three rules. Uh, be sure to, you know, check this out or write this down. I think this graphic really helps me Okay, we also have mixed hypothetical syllogisms, and that is where one premise is conditional and one is categorical. This is what they look like. If X, then Y, that's the conditional premise. X, that's the categorical premise, therefore Y. 
All right, so that's called a mixed hypothetical syllogism. Here's the rule. It must meet this standard. The categorical premise must affirm the antecedent of the conditional premise. So in this case, uh, X, that second statement, does in fact affirm the conditional uh, premise, the antecedent of the conditional premise. So if X, and then we're saying, yes, X, we are affirming X. So it passes that part of the test. And the conclusion must affirm the consequent of the conditional premise. So then Y, and the conclusion, sure enough, therefore, Y. So the second premise has to confirm the antecedent. The conclusion has to confirm the consequent. A straightforward rule can get kind of confusing. So go ahead and, and test this out. Try and evaluate your uh, disjunctive and hypothetical syllogisms using these rules. Come see me if you need help.